Hi everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started right now. I did want to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Thomas Scott and I'm a business advisor here at CallSource. Um, joining me today is also going to be my colleague Nicole Marabelli. Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started on this. Um, I'd like to let you guys know that I do want this to be an interactive webinar, so if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to submit them into the question box or to raise your hand on the dashboard um, if you want to participate in the Q&A session after the uh, actual presentation. Um, if you haven't done so already, please remember to select the telephone option under the audio section of your dashboard to call into today's meeting. It'll provide a phone number and an audio pin access code that's unique to everybody. Um, again, at the end of the presentation, please feel free to ask questions and participate. We are going to be recording this, and the recording is going to be available to you um, once we finish today. So today we're going to be looking at managing business constraints. So the concept of managing business constraints or managing constraint points wasn't actually my idea. Giving credit where credit's due, it was originally presented in a book called The Goal, A Process of Ongoing Improvement by Eliyahu M. Goldratt. This book actually provides insight into the constraints faced by a manufacturing company, but the concept can be applied to your business as well. So the theory of constraints breaks down into identifying the most important limiting factor or the constraint point that stands in the way of achieving a goal and then systematically improving that constraint until it's no longer a limiting factor. This can be actually summed up by a quote by Goldratt, the capacity of your business is equal to the capacity of its bottlenecks. There's a lot of data that is available to you. So knowing how to separate the metrics that are responsible for growth from all other data, uh, data actually clarifies what needs to be managed. Each growth metric can be a constraining point in a business, and knowing how to implement a process of ongoing improvement in the business, you can actually identify the most important constraint that stands in the way of achieving your goal. In order to achieve higher results, whether in a personal life or in your business, you do need to set goals. A business cannot manage for improvement without understanding where you're already finding success and where there's opportunity for improvement. From here, we're going to discuss how business growth um, actually can be likened to a manu manufacturer assembly line. Each unit produced needs to be processed by a series of machines before the end goal is actually achieved. Each is dependent on the next. So if you look at this animation here, the machine with the smallest capacity actually dictates the number of units produced. In this particular case, C is actually the constraint point in the process and is actually dictating that productivity. Only two units will be produced, even though D has a capacity of 10 units. Even maximizing A and B to their fullest potential will still yield only two units. Well, why is that? The total process can only be improved when the constraint is improved, when the bottleneck is actually managed. Your business is facing a similar process in genera generating or manufacturing sales and ultimately your business growth. Organizational performance is dictated by these roadblocks. Take this model and apply it to any other aspect of your business. This could be the actual number of call handlers um, that you have, or maybe there's a call handler on your team who's maybe rude to potential clients calling in. That would definitely impact your organization's performance. You're only going to be as strong as your weakest link. So capacity constraints. These, restrictions, uh, these are restrictions that prevent your business from maximizing its performance and reaching its goals. Constraints can involve people, supplies, information, equipment, or even policies, and can be internal or external to the organization. The main capacity restraints that we're going to be looking into are your marketing capacity, or the ability to generate leads in order to acquire new clients, conversion capacity, or setting as many appointments as possible, and scheduling capacity, or the scheduling availability of the office. This essentially determines or limits the size of the business. So let's take a look at your marketing capacity. So generating leads is the first step in acquiring new customers. Businesses cannot grow beyond the number of leads actually generated. So let me give you an example. A business's goal is to gain 100 new customers per month, and right now they're generating 50 new leads a month. First and foremost, are enough prospects being generated to meet their sales and growth objectives? At this point, no. 
a business cannot grow beyond the number of leads generated. In this example, the business's maximum capacity for growth is limited to 50 new customers. The business will fall short of its goal of 100 new customers, even if conversion, scheduling, and acquisition are operating perfectly. In this scenario, the business's marketing operates as a constraint to their growth. Increasing or improving its marketing campaigns is going to be necessary to grow any new revenue. So how are you able to manage that marketing capacity constraint? Can additional prospects potentially be generated? Absolutely. How are we going to go ahead and achieve this? Well, the first thing that can be done is going to be additional marketing. This would need to be carefully measured for effectiveness. As business leaders, we know you don't want to throw money away at the problem, and we know that marketing is an expensive um, is an expensive proposition. Additional marketing can include more frequent mailers, new mediums, or even improved online presence. Another thing that you can actually utilize, oh, excuse me, my apologies. You'd want to look into what has been successful or unsuccessful in the past when it comes to your additional marketing. You don't want to make the same mistake unnecessarily and waste money on that marketing effort. Our reporting can actually help to provide insight into what has worked and what hasn't worked in the past. Another way that you can um, gain additional prospects is actually one of the more um, effective methods, and that's going to be referrals from your existing customers. It doesn't hurt to ask a happy customer if they know anyone else who could benefit from your particular service. The last way to actually manage the constraint is going to be improved marketing. This can be as simple as altering a marketing message to elicit a strong response. This allows new marketing effort without spending additional money in new marketing sources. Improved marketing can also include ending campaigns that are yielding low returns. That way the money can be reallocated to new marketing campaigns, which will keep the overall marketing cost in check. At this time, I'm actually going to pass it off to Nicole, and she's going to give you a real-world example of how improved marketing can help. Go ahead and take it away, Nicole. Thank you, Thomas. So I would like to share a success story that I used with my client where they identified and managed a capacity constraint using our call source data. So what they found is their team was performing at a high level. They had very high conversion rates, yet they still were not reaching their overall business goals. So we looked at their data and we identified it was their marketing that was acting as a constraint and that's what needed to be managed. They were just not generating enough leads in order to meet their overall business objectives. So the question that we had to ask was, can additional prospects be generated? So by supplying that marketing transparency, the call source reports helped them ensure that they weren't spending advertising, spending marketing dollars on advertising that was not performing for them. So they utilize their reports and trending data, as you see here on the screen, to understand and maximize their marketing investment return. So this graph represents the client's prospect call volume for their newspaper and website campaigns. The first step was to verify if the advertising campaign that they thought was a strong performer, their newspaper campaign, which they had been using for many years, was actually yielding the best return. By determining how much a quality lead costs you across each campaign, you'll be able to weigh your return on investment and make sure your marketing dollars are being spent in the best method possible. And through our metrics, they identified their newspaper campaign not only was very expensive for them, it wasn't returning as strong of a result as it had in the past for them. And you need to learn what works and what doesn't work. And the only way to understand this is by testing the waters and allocating some of your budget to some new avenues. I know everyone hates spending money, but if you spend money in the right way, it's going to be essential to create growth. And our analytics help support their decision in reallocating marketing dollars from their newspaper campaign. So they decided they were going to invest in their website, as noted here. This allowed the client to generate more leads without spending any additional money on marketing sources. After they made the switch, they quickly found their investment paid off. At this time, we're still reviewing their current metrics in order to create new growth opportunities for them in the future, but their website campaign continues to improve over time as they continue the process. They want to repeat what worked and eliminate what did not work. So they make some tweaks on their website 
then they check back in on the progress on how they're performing over time. So our call source reports can tell you that very same thing. We can tell you what's bringing in the highest quality leads, and you can use this information to reallocate marketing dollars from a source that's underperforming, or even end campaigns that are no longer bringing you value. So if you'd like to take a look at your own data, feel free to reach out to your designated call source representative so you can dive in and see if there's any possible capacity constraints in your business and opportunities for improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. All right, guys, so moving on, we're going to continue to look at marketing capacity. Another question you can ask yourself, again, as a business leader is, are there additional prospective clients in the marketplace? Sometimes, honestly, the answer is going to be no. You've reached out to everybody in the marketplace. So what can you actually do to improve your marketing capacity at that point? Well, one thing you can actually do is expanding your services. An HVAC repair business can look into maybe adding plumbing or electrical services. The advantage to adding these new services are that they don't need new prospects. You can actually advertise to your existing client base. The next one is going to be actually expanding your territory in order to reach new customers um, outside of your designated region. Now, just so you're aware, both of these are additional expenses and may not be feasible for everybody, but these are additional options that you have in managing the marketing capacity constraint, uh, constraint point. All right, guys, next we're going to look at conversion capacity or your conversion rates. Setting the appointment is the second step in generating leads, um, I'm sorry, in generating sales throughput or additional revenue. You can access your employees' conversion rates with our reports. Um, below average conversion rates are actually going to indicate that appointment setting is a constraint. Call handler skills are likely lacking in one or more areas, and there is potential training for the uh, training opportunities for those call handlers. This means that efforts to increase the marketing capacity, um, like expanding your territory, etc., um, are not going to be maximized. But how can you manage that constraint point? Well, you can identify opportunities to coach and train your call handlers. If you need assistance in coaching your staff, make sure to reach out to your uh, designated call source representative, and we can provide more insight into our call coaching products and other um, avenues that we can take. Also, what you need to do is also create a perform, uh, performance-based culture. So make sure to establish goals for your call handlers, review, uh, review call recordings with your call handlers, provide constructive feedback, and if you haven't done so already, try to set up an incentive program for your team. All right, scheduling capacity. This is the ability to book appointments for prospects or customers seeking service, and it's essential to growing a business. Again, scheduling availability essentially determines or limits the size of your business. Businesses that reach their maximum scheduling capacity must turn away customers. This allows you the luxury of actually being selective uh, with which appointments you take. However, unscheduled prospects may be permanently lost customers. So one thing to keep in mind if you are having a scheduling capacity issue, um, are you able to actually purchase new trucks or hire additional personnel to accommodate more prospective clients? It's just something to keep in mind. All right. Next, we're just going to look at a few other capacity constraints that a business might face. So customer acquisition capacity. This is going to be the ability to turn a prospect who booked an appointment into an actual paying customer. Just because the customer booked the appointment doesn't necessarily guarantee they're going to buy. Some people may cancel an appointment, etc. So struggling to turn an appointment into a customer actually represents a growing constraint or a growth constraint, excuse me. And then the last thing that I want to mention is going to be your operational capacity. This is going to be a limitation within the, uh, the organization itself. Uh, itself. One big thing is actually time can be um, an example of an operational constraint. So if a business owner doesn't have enough time in the day to generate new marketing campaigns or train their call handlers, then they're going to need to um, look into investing into uh, additional personnel that can assist them with that. Now, this is not something that we can actually measure directly with our um, analytics. However, um, we can assist and try to overcome these constraint points. All right, guys. At this time, thank you again for uh, for attending. Um, I do want to keep. Uh, I do want to remind you that we do have another um, webinar coming uh, coming soon. So please keep an eye out for uh, the communication for that, and it's actually going to be on how to communicate with your team.
Uh, at this time, I do actually want to open it up to a few questions. If you have anything, please feel free to type into the question box or uh, raise your hand and I can, uh, I can unmute you to actually ask the question. Thomas, I actually was thinking of something. As you were talking about operational capacity, I know a common theme that I find when I work with my clients is that time management issue. As you mentioned, time resources are an example of an operational constraint within the office. How would you recommend or what call source resources can help the owners or leaders on, in our audience today struggling with time management? That's a great question, Nicole. I mean, to be honest, there's a few ways that we can actually assist. I mean, first and foremost, what I would recommend is actually reaching out to your designated call source rep. They have a multitude of different um, documentation and materials that they can use to help with these situations. Um, also, there's an individualized aspect to this. Not every business is the same. So again, I would make sure to reach out to your uh, call source representative to see what they can do in order to kind of suggest the next, uh, the best next step for uh, those operational constraints. Another thing that we can do or that I highly recommend is actually attending these webinar sessions that we're going to continue to host multiples of um, because those will actually also provide insight into what can be done um, for business leaders going forward. That's great. Thank you very much. You got it. Um, I actually had another question come through. Um, it's pretty simple. What reports can be pulled to show these constraint points? Again, there's quite a few reports that we can provide you guys that have different analytics. I would reach out to your call source rep um, so they can break down that information for you specifically. All right, guys, I'm not seeing any additional questions come in at this time. Um, so what I'm going to do, we're going to end the presentation. This pre uh, presentation will be available to you um, later on today. Um, and if you do have any questions or if you need uh, any assistance, again, please reach out to your designated call source rep. Thanks again, everybody, for your time.